saith the Lord. And like a hammer which breaketh the rock. Anyways, uh, that's my sermon for tonight. <laughs> so, uh, I, even when I have a guest speaker, I still have to get my sermon ready for tonight. So, uh, I still have a sermon. But uh, this week, I, I was going through some old papers, cleaning up some things, and an old magazine, a holiness uh, magazine from 1912. Uh, it's before your time, Bishop. Uh, but, uh, anyways, uh, from another bishop, Bishop Horner, and there was the title, the caption, uh, his sermon, his uh, his editorial that uh, that day is not my word like a fire. The word saith the Lord that breaketh in pieces the rocks. So, anyway, so said, okay, I'm going with the Lord. So that's my message for tonight. His word is powerful, and we're going to hear the word this morning. Uh, Tyler is going to come. Tyler Ellison, a uh, young man, that's going to share the word of the Lord. And I told him to take his time to get here. Because uh, he's sharing at Delta Baptist Church at 9.30 this morning. And so uh, I said, take your time. Visit with people there after the service is over. And um, here comes Pastor Brian. Yeah, right. And so uh, so here they come. And uh, they took, and took their time. But Brian drives slower than I do. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're glad that they're here. And we're glad that you're here this morning. And those that may be watching uh, Sealy's Bay holding this church this morning. Um, our opening hymn is My Hope is Built. Can't find it. All right. 340. Thank you. 
I better come up with you. Better come up because uh, we will report you to the system if you don't. <laughs> morning. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This morning and uh, glad to be able to bring Troy along this morning as well. So let's pray together. Lord God, we gather today in this place. Yes. We gather in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. And we gather to worship. We gather to be fed. We gather to give praise yes, and honor to the nice Lord. Lord. Lord, be among us this morning. Minister your grace and your goodness. Impart your life to us. And we thank you for Jesus who gave his life on the cross, who died and rose again and will never lose. Mm. And so we come today in his wonderful name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Well, we, are, we are glad to have Brother and Sister Wheaton here this morning, as well as Brother Troy Ellison. I said it right? Yes. God bless you, Brother Troy. We're going to hear from you later on. So let's uh, worship the Lord together and give Him praise this morning. Good morning, everyone. said other things. <laughs> be kind, Pastor, be kind. Uh, I'm still kind of stuck uh, on Easter, so I'd like to start with amazing love, because I'm forgiven because yes. you were for sin. I'm accepted because you were for God. Be a 
my light and strength, my song, this corner soul, this sign the ground, the day they that storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, and there's
us today to encourage us. We're a small group. So it is a blessing to have everybody. Glory to God. Glad to have you folks from down the road. And uh, we're glad that you're here today and those that are watching today. And pray that God will bless you abundantly. Glad to have our sister in back. God bless you, sister. I'm the turnip guy. She knows from the pastor business because there's turnips on her porch. <laughs> so that's my calling card these days is turnips. So you leave me uh, a pie, Pastor. Uh, turnip pie? No, no, just maybe cherry or apple. No, turnip pie. I got turnips. So if you'd like a turnip pie. Let's leave it open. Yeah, we'll see. Pastor. I suppose you can turn a pie at Pastor Ruth's makes it, is that right? All right. Just to share with you just a little bit that uh, Randall and Anita are missionaries in Haiti are in the Dominican Republic. They are safe there and they are ministering to the Haitian people that have gone across to the Dominican and then close the borders so they can't get back. So they're still ministering with uh, their people and uh, very active, very busy. But they are in a place of safety and that's what we thank God for. Because he does do miraculous things to put us in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that more and more, that he does direct our steps. And we don't see that until after we've gone past him. We look back and say, oh yes, God was there in a special way. And that's, that's so powerful. Let's bow our hearts in prayer. Father, we come into your presence this morning because there is nowhere else that we can go to find peace, find help, find strength, and find answers to prayer. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing with this young man's life that, uh, that you are touching him and bringing him through. We praise you for that. And Lord, we can stand here today and, and list things after things where you have been miraculously moving in our midst in these past few days, past few months. And Father, we praise you for that. We thank you for that. We pray that you would, you would bless this congregation and these people. Father, bless this community. Lay your hand upon it. And may your grace and your strength and, and your power be evident as your church. And Lord, not just this church, but your church builds and works in this community and its countryside. We ask your blessing upon the speaker today. Father, that uh, his heart would be stirred and our hearts would be stirred. Lord, today, we just honor and praise you for all that you do and all that you continue to do. For we pray in Christ's name and for your glory. Amen. Yes. Yeah. I'll invite uh, Troy to come to the band because he's going to do a special. And uh, just as he comes, I'll just give a couple of announcements. And uh, one, of course, is that Kids Club is Tuesday night uh, here at 6.30. And we have a good group of kids coming out, enjoying and learning about the Word of God. And then we have a uh, men's breakfast on the 20th. I had it announced it as a, as a mixed breakfast, but there's some ladies things going down. And I think it's a free Methodist ladies' conference. So uh, we're going to keep it as men's breakfast for the 20th. So that is coming up as well. So those are the announcements. Brother Joel.
come from the big city of Kitty, which I was part of the just to stay close to stay close to that. Just have to stay close. He's his bird of God, that's right. Uh, so Brother Troy comes from the big city of Kitchener, which uh, uh, for me, I was uh, part of the Evangelical Missionary Church for Man Bible College for 35 years, so that was the holy city. You know, like you know Kitchener was the holy city. That's where the head office was. So uh, anyways, uh, all of them 13 churches and then Kitchener uh, with the Evangelical Missionary Church. So uh, it was, uh, and then now we went to Tendale. That's where I went to school. I hope I didn't mess it up too bad. It's still there. Praise be to God. So anyways, we welcome you to come to the pulpit and share. He was at the Baptist Church this morning. Uh, what are you preaching tonight? Pentecostal Church? You're working your way. You know, salvation, sanctification, and the fullness of the Holy Ghost. So that those of us who can do all three in one Sunday. Amen. Come on up, brother, and share the word of God. We welcome you here today. You can tell us maybe a little bit more about yourself on me. Glad to, glad to have you here today. The Lord bless you. Welcome to the ball. I think uh, Pastor said just about everything. There you go. Short life. Well, today I'm going to share a passage of Scripture which I believe is quite familiar to all of us, and that is. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. And uh, I'd like to first begin by asking, just asking the question, uh, has anyone here ever run a marathon race before? Just a race hand. Do I look like a guy that's run a marathon? <laughs> so I guess I could be counting uh, in that uh, number as well. But I, I start off by asking this question mainly because uh, a marathon race could uh, be quite comparable to our relationships with Christ in that uh, a marathon race, uh, one needs to stay in the, in the long haul uh, just like we would in a marathon race. And, or in other words, one needs to run the Christian race with uh, endurance just like a marathon race. Not yet found it, I'll invite you to turn to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us, that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Let us run the race with perseverance, the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perpetuator of our faith, for the joy, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as I share your word today, I ask that uh, each person will be edified. This I ask in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Amen. It's important to note that uh, within this passage of scripture, the writer of Hebrews was uh, comforting uh, the Hebrew Christians and uh, comforting them because of their uh, the trial they were going through and the persecution they were going through. And in light of that, the writer of Hebrews compares the Christian race with the with marathon race. And the writer of Hebrews encourages the Hebrew Christians by saying that they are to run the race with endurance and does so firstly by saying that Christians are to, in verse 1, that Christians are to mark, that Christians are to make the necessary preparation for running the Christian race. Notice, and, and one might be asking, one might be saying, I didn't know that uh, you need to prepare for running a Christian race, but here the writer of Hebrews uh, clearly points out at least four different ways in which a believer can prepare for running 
Christian race, and one of those is firstly looking back at the examples of those in Scripture who ran the race with endurance. Notice in verse, in verse, the first half of verse uh, one, the writer of uh, uh, Hebrews says that therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, and by cloud of witness, the writer of Hebrews is making reference to the many Old Testament believers, and he uses this phrase as a figurative representation of how we ought to act, as if the Old Testament believers were in sight and cheering us on to the same victory in life of faith that they obtained. And I don't know about you, but when I look back at Old Testament believers like Job, for example, who lost just about everything he had, he, he lost his children and all of his possessions, but still uh, persevered and continued to uh, continue on in his faith. And I believe that as believers, when we go through our times of trials, we should look back at those Old Testament believers and gain encouragement from them as we persevere and go through our trials. Yes, sir. But not only does is uh, looking back at, or to look back at those in the past who, in, the, in Scripture, who uh, persevered through their faith, but also we are to uh, remove the things, the writer of Hebrews says that we are to remove things in life that hinders us. And notice, uh, he says, let us throw off everything that hinders us. And by throwing off everything that hinders us, the writer of Hebrews means getting rid of everything in, in our lives that might get in the way of our relationships with Christ. And you know, there are many things uh, that could uh, get in our relationships with Christ. Yeah. Uh, for example, our, our possessions, and it's a sad reality that many uh, Christians have uh, made their possessions an idol in our lives, and so I believe it's clearly showing that we are to not uh, make our possessions uh, become the first priority in our lives, but God should always be Amen. the first priority in our lives. Amen. But, but not only does he uh, say that we are not to uh, lay aside, that we are to lay aside our lives, but we are also to uh, be to determined to stay in the race. Notice the writer of Hebrews continues uh, in verse 1 by saying, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And what the writer of Hebrews means by the phrase, let us run the race with perseverance, is that believers are to persevere in their faith, not grow weary. Because, because at the end, the believer will reap the reward of spending eternity uh, with Christ. Yes. And you know, oftentimes, uh, as believers, it's quite easy for us to walk away from the faith. Uh, when we go through our trials, but we are not to, I believe we are not to walk away from our faith, but we are to see our trials as a way of uh, building our faith and uh, causing us to trust more on God and rely more on Him. Amen. So, in verse 1, uh, it's, verse 1, the writer of Hebrews is first seeing that Christians are to mark in this make the necessary preparation for running the Christian race. As we go on to verse 2, here uh, the, the writer of Hebrews is saying that uh, Christians are to fix their eyes on Jesus as they run the Christian race. And, and points out at least three different ways in how a believer can uh, fix their eyes on Jesus. First is that uh, reasons for why a believer should fix their eyes on Jesus. And the first is that Jesus is the pioneer of our faith. Notice that uh, the writer of uh, Hebrews says in uh, the first half of verse 2 that, that we are to fix 
fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer of our faith. And what the writer of Hebrews means by Jesus being the pioneer of our faith is that, is that Jesus established our faith and that he is the reason for why we have been able to gain access to God the Father. Gain access to God the Father, and I believe that uh, that many of us, that uh, many believers within the 21st century, have shifted their focus off of uh, um, the idea of Christ being our uh, uh, reason for our faith. Uh, many have uh, placed more emphasis on. Uh, on their possessions and giving God thanks only for possessions rather than uh, giving God thanks for uh, for sending His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. Yeah. As we go on to uh, the second half of verse uh, three, the verse two, the, um, the writer of Hebrews gives another reason for why we are to fix our eyes on Jesus, and that is because Jesus is the perfecter of our faith. And notice he says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the perfecter of our faith, and by perfecter uh, of our faith, the writer of Hebrews is saying that Jesus preserves our faith. And I believe that as believers, we need to be reminded that when we go through our trials, that we're not uh, in our trials alone, that Jesus is with us as we uh, continue, as we go through those uh, difficult times in our lives. Yes, yes. As we go on to uh, the last half of verse 3, um, the writer of uh, Hebrews uh, gives one last reason to why we are to fix our eyes on Jesus, and that is because Jesus paid the penalty for our sins on the cross. Uh, notice that the writer of Hebrews uh, ends verse 3 by saying, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right of the throne of God. And what the writer means by Jesus endured the cross is that Jesus established our faith through his work, sacrificial work done on the cross. And I believe that it's a sad reality that Christians have uh, neglected uh, giving up God thanks for uh, sending his son to die on the cross. Often we did receive believers uh, thanking God for our spiritual blessings, but uh, for our material blessings, but never thanking God for our for, for a sending Son to die on the cross for our sins. So, in verse two, the writer of uh, the writer will say that Christians are to fix their eyes on Jesus as they run the Christian race. So we end in verse three. Here, the writer of Ephesians uh, was saying, "Oh." The writer of uh, Hebrews was saying that Christians are to reflect on Jesus' suffering on the cross as they run the Christian race. And, and the benefits of doing so, the writer of Ephesians uh, says that a Christian can gain an encouragement for running the Christian race. Notice, uh, notice the, uh, the writer of uh, Hebrews uh, says in verse 3, Consider him who endured such opposition for sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And what the writer, and notice that the writer says to consider, and to consider means to take into account who suffered the horrible death of dying on the cross. It's to consider that Christ stops suffered the horrible death of dying on the cross without resisting. And, and I believe likewise, when we go through our trials, uh, we should model after Christ's uh, full submission of dying on the cross 
for our sins as we go through our trials. Because at the end of that, we could look forward for the hope and the reward of uh, spending eternity with Christ. I'd like to once, as I come to a close, I'd like to once again remind you that we are to run the Christian race with endurance. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, oftentimes we are faced with uh, many things that may be unbearable. But I ask that you will remind us in those times of adversity that you are with us and that we are not to give up, but that we are to continue to persevere because at the end of that, we, we will spend eternity with your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think every Christian should memorize those texts of Scripture in the first three verses of Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 altogether is a marvelous text of Scripture. But since we have so great a cloud of witnesses, those that have gone before us, amen, I got so many, a pastor, uh, our bishop here, and sister, you know, um, his sister, sister, which is our sister. Anyway, we won't get into the complication. But, uh, you know, I think it's like this past year, we lost them. We put a lot of witnesses who are on the other side. And we have a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Let us also lay aside every embrace. You know what? I tell you, I never have run. Marathon. <laughs> uh, think my physique betrays me. <laughs> now, you know, maybe you did a backpack. What do they do in the military? You know, like I do, you got to do something. You know, yeah, rope march. You got to do marches and stuff. You know. Um, but if I ever did do, the only way I would survive would be a lot of people cheering me on. That would be the only way I could make it. You know, with the two things. With the the goal always before me, the finish line, and people cheering me on. That's the only way I can make it through. And there's no way I can make it through with all those things entangling, the weight of sin, the weight of things. You know, um, it's just not worth it, friends. The finish line is so valuable to us. The finish line is everything. We don't want anything to keep us from getting in the way of us running with endurance the race that is set out before us. Keeping your eyes on Jesus. You know, Brother Peter, he learned that lesson, didn't he? Amen. As he was going now, keeping your eyes on Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith, isn't he? Wonderful text of Scripture. And think about Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross for us, despising the shame, because it was a shameful thing, cursed as he did. It's nailed to a tree. Eyes on a tree. Despising the shame, sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. That's where he is now, cheering us on. Yeah, we have a great cloud of witnesses. Or consider him who has endured such hostility by sins. Remember, you were hostile too. <laughs> Don't just blame the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Romans at the time, but remember, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet at enmity with God, while we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. So, what a wonderful text of Scripture. Thank you, brother, for sharing that scripture with us and reminding us of the power of staying true and staying close to God through all things. Amen. Amen. Father, we do thank thee and praise thee, O God, for thy holy word. Your word is a fire, saith the Lord. And your word is a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Thank you for your word today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Troy has
I suggested a closing hymn. You know what? I'm going to take him up on it. And that closing hymn, sister, is 393. 393. Which is? My faith looks up to thee. Now, Lamb of 